Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about economics. We're going to review for our first quiz, which is coming up this Thursday. Ready, set, here we go. Fast and furious. All right, our working definition of economics is we will define it as economics is the study of how rational actors use limited resources to fulfill unlimited wants with the maximum amount of desired benefits. What am I saying is that we're going to study how we make decisions to maximize our benefits. Scarcity is the fundamental economic problem of having unlimited wants and limited resources to fulfill those wants. Very clearly, there's not enough to satisfy everything that we want as a society or as a human race. All right? Something is going to get left out, and that's the idea of scarcity. No such thing as a free lunch operates as our opportunity cost. Opportunity cost is the value of the best foregone alternative or the value of what was given up. So if I go out to lunch and you buy lunch, I'm giving up something else. You may not see it that way, but I am giving up something else. I'm giving up time. I'm giving up money. I'm giving up an opportunity to earn wages. All right? There is no such thing as a free lunch in our economy. Every time we make a decision, we're costing something along those lines. We talk about incentives. We talked about five different types of incentives. The first are positive incentives. Positive incentives oftentimes call people a, a, we call it a reward. They change the behavior, creating something that you would want, i.e., Working for money, working harder for a bonus, working for different types of things that are happening in our society, right? Maybe, maybe you know, getting a reward of finding a stolen purse or something and turning it in for a $500 reward. Whatever it might be, we have positive incentives. On the flip side, we have negative incentives. Negative incentives oftentimes call it a penalty. These aim to motivate people to avoid punishment or pain, all right? And that punishment can be monetary punishment as well. So we see those no littering signs on the highway, $500 fine, $1,000 fine, $10,000 fine, all right? We see those no speeding and construction zone signs, you know, 15 years in jail, all right? So what we talk about that is we're talking about a negative incentive. You don't want to break the law because if you break the law, we're going to punish you. We try to avoid that. Now, within incentives, there are three other types. We see economic incentives, social incentives, and moral incentives. Economic incentives is where a person can expect a material reward for their behavior, i.e. money. All right? Social incentives is where they work out of shame or glory. They're trying to get the attention of others to seem important, and moral is all in your own head. All right? You act a certain way because you don't want to think yourself as wrong. Next, resource. A resource is a source supply from which benefit is produced. That's what you need to know. Resources are typically materials, energy, service, staff, knowledge, or other assets that are transformed to produce benefit and in process may be consumed or made unavailable. Economic resources include human resources, which is the health, education, experience, training, skills, and values of people, sometimes referred to as human capital. Capital resources, items that are made or used to assist in the production and distribution of goods and services. And finally, natural resources, which are resources that can be produced, can be used to produce goods or services that occur naturally. All three of these types of resources are important, and I bet if you try hard enough, you can always find a product that contains at least all three of them. Traditional economy is the four types of economy. We're going to talk about tradition. They still produce ways on the old way. All right. They are characterized by minimum waste, rural conditions, little to no profit, and little technology. Examples include the Inuit cultures, parts of Africa, parts of Latin America, parts of the Middle East, and parts of Asia. The pros, the tradition is maintained. Each member of society has a profound role, while the cons are that they are vulnerable to changes, specifically changes in weather. We talk about a command economy, we're talking about the idea of communism, all right? Command economies are economies that are typically controlled from one place. The government, government makes all decisions on what and how much to produce. Government also decides values and pay. Common, uh, command economies are char commonly characterized by the following items, centralized power, government ownership of the means of production, not only the factory, but also the resources, and they usually follow a socialist or communist government. Examples include the United Soviet Socialist Republic, China, Cuba, Vietnam, and North Korea, even though one doesn't exist and the four are moving towards a more open, less command economy. Finally, pros, it allows for regulation and it allows for growth. Cons, it's unfair to the population. Unrest will happen and there will be limited innovation. Next is the market economy. This is hypothetical. It doesn't exist, but it's basically the, the, the markets control everything that's going on. All right? Government always wants their share, so that doesn't happen. It's characterized by free market ideas and zero government involvement. Examples include none. There are zero examples here. 
All right, pros seemingly perfect, no regulation, no taxes, cons, zero government regulation, and non-existent. So you could definitely see that that's uh, there. Finally, we have the economy that we live in, the mixed economy. Mixed economies are economies that are a combination of other economies, specifically a combination of command and market. Mixed economies allow for private ownership and decisions, but government is still involved. Mixed economy is more or less free of government, some state-run enterprises, and individual liberties. Examples, the USA, Canada, England, Mexico, Japan, and many others. Pros allows for freedom. Anyone can be successful in innovation. Cons, government disputes, uh, government disputes and taxes all happen. All right. Production possibility curve basically shows us um, efficiency, opportunity, cost, trade-offs in the production in a given field. We use that example of guns versus butter, and we could see that. All right, it measures the margin of the next unit produced. All right, so that's really what's important. So when we look at something like this, all right, going from point B, we're producing X amount of guns, right, and then all of a sudden we're going to point D, we're producing more butter and less guns, and you can kind of see that there's a trade-off between producing guns and butter in this example. Margin is the idea of the next unit produced. Utility is the enjoyment from each unit consumed. Marginal utility is the enjoyment from each additional unit consumed. We did the cookie experiment to discuss this as we talked about it. All right. When we look at the circular flow diagram, we look at it for a car. We go to the house. There's the house. We go to the product market, which is the car dealership. We spend money at the car dealership. We get a car. Next up, we take a look at the product market and the factory firm. We the the Car dealership provides revenue to the factory firm like Ford or Jeep, and in exchange, they get a boatload of trucks or cars or SUVs, whatever it might be. The factory or firm goes to the resource market and gives them money all right, to pay their workers, and in exchange, they're getting labor and resources to make those cars. All right, and finally, I go to work every day to earn an income, and I am in the resource market, and that's how our circular flow diagram involves. But there's one missing part here, and that's the government. We don't have a pure market economy. We have a mixed economy. So the government is taxing us at the household, taxing us at the product market, taxing us at the factory, and taxing us at the resource market in all three places. All right. So with that, that's all that we have today. We'll take care. You guys take care. Um, good luck on the quiz. We'll see you then. Bye.